Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. This is your Gaza War Sit Rep Day 199. No end in sight. I saw some notes from Hamas's negotiating team that there's nothing much happening. They want to. I think Ismail Haniya said all that Israel wants to do is get their hostages back and resume the war. So that's not acceptable to us, which makes a lot of sense. So we keep going on and we keep reporting. Nora's here. Hi, Nora. Hello. Okay, so Nora and I are going to go over the news on the different fronts. And then we're going to talk mostly about the campus situation. That's why I wanted you on here, Nora, because you're the campus specialist. You've been covering the campus beat at um, EI, right? For years. Yeah, for I think since I started at EI, which was in 2010. So, yeah. Yeah. You wrote a book about it. 14 great years. Yeah, I wrote a book. SJPs. So, yeah. All right. So world's leading authority on U.S. campuses, I'd say. (laughs) It's generous uh, yeah so and but sad. let's start let's start in the west bank because it's big big stuff in the west bank so um tulkarim was the big story of the past uh, weekend it's been a while sorry guys i haven't been sit repping you know hopefully why i i did a talk at um for some for a swedish european palestine youth union with john and then i did a talk for mateo's uh, middle east critique journal with uh, alex avinia so I did that Friday and Sunday, so no sit reps. I was preparing my lectures. Give me a break, people. Come on. <laughs> um, so yeah, the West Bank. Tolkarum, I missed this. I didn't report this, but uh there was a three-day-long invasion by the Israelis of the Nur Ashams camp in, next to Tolkarum. So every town in the West Bank has a camp, right? Uh, so like Janin has Janin camp, Nablus has Balata camp, Tolkarum has Nur Ashams camp. Some cities have more than one, like Bethlehem has three. Right, right. So there was a particular uh, leader. There's a, an amazing story because there's a leader, I guess, from this camp named Abu Shuja. And the Israelis claimed that they killed him on April 20th and everybody mourned him and everything. And then he popped up yesterday alive um, and he basically he gave an interview and he was at a big rally and he said you know we're not going to let the people of gaza down and uh, we're going to keep fighting and keep us in your prayers so it was a very interesting moment um in resistance history i'd say um, but in the over the course of the invasion the israelis killed many people it destroyed many houses but uh you know, they were constantly confronted and, and eventually they left. Like, it's a raid. This is the pattern now. They make these raids, right? Um, Hebron, settler mobs and the Israeli Defense Force invaded Hebron. So Hebron is a particularly dramatic case, right, Nora? Because tiny yeah. settler minority, gigantic uh, mm-hmm. Relative to uh, Palestinian population, so it's not like at all balanced, and the settlers are such uh, so abusive and so egregious uh, that like lots of stories from have brought. So yeah, for the last thirty years, uh, the settlers have been enjoying near impunity, total impunity in in Hebron, Khalil. Um and yeah, they kind of get the run of the place, uh, and frequently. Assisted by the Israeli soldiers, they throw Palestinians out of their homes or um, attack them. Nablus, uh, Balata camp, like I mentioned, uh, they the resistance groups in Balata, they said that they attacked and directly, they claimed that there were di- direct casualties, including an injury of an Israeli soldier. They withdrew with the soldier. So... Uh, I guess, successful confrontations there. Uh, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades in Janin reported fierce clashes south of Janin. The Israelis sent reinforcements in. Same with Tubas. The Israelis invaded. There were clashes. The Israelis sent reinforcements. Another set of settler mobs in Ramallah in the town of Burqa, also backed by the Israeli army. So all over the West Bank, lots and lots of fighting. Um There's also been like releases of administrative detainees, if you've been seeing these. Yeah, uh, I think John mentioned why it's 
because the prisons don't have any more room, so they have to um, deal with the overflow. I mean, they've they've doubled they've doubled the prison population since October seventh. 13,000 or something. Yeah. So they released Yasser Zamara, Professor Imad Barghouti, Omar Asaf, and the like. The pictures they, the resistance shows these pictures of um like before and after and like they're yeah. emaciated the conditions. I mean, these are like older there. men too. Like yeah. uh, Imad Barghouti is a scientist who was abducted. Yeah. I don't even remember when. Sometime last year, um, or the year before. I, I, time is meaningless, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I they're mean, saying was, six months. That's what they say. Was it six months? Which seems so like a lot. They released a lot them. longer than that, but yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to say, uh, about this that like I I've shown this map before, but when you think of the West Bank and it, you could be forgiven for being for finding it a little bit scary. That they're the Israelis are trying to kind of do in the West Bank what they've been doing in Gaza. But when you compare the size of the West Bank and um, what it is that they have to try to do, the Israelis, to control the West Bank, it's, uh, if you think of it as a problem for the people of the West Bank, of course it's terrifying. But if you think of it as a problem for the Israelis, it also becomes hard to imagine how they can contain the West Bank if the whole West Bank is rising up against them. Like, look at the size of Gaza compared to the West Bank. And it's true that they have a wall, but the wall is only as good as the people that are defending the wall. And the people defending this wall are not that good. So I just think that the situation in the West Bank getting out of control is something that they don't want to talk about very much. And I think in a lot of ways, it's um, more devastating for Israel than it is for, than Gaza, Gaza is in, in some, in some I ways. I mean, the, the thing that that map doesn't show though, is the like archipelago of settlements in the yeah. West Bank, which are not just like colonies that settlers live in, but they're also military fortresses. I mean, every settlement has at least one, you know, police station, detention center. Uh, there's they're they're very um, methodically, uh, you know, like geographically placed so that they're mostly on top of hill. Yeah, there we go. So they're mostly on top of hills. They look down on Palestinian cities and villages and refugee camps. Um, they're, like I said, heavily militarized. Um, and so that's, you know, so, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. it's part of the settler state complex. Yeah. Right. But so I, I guess all, all I'll say, it's not, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, uh, be overly optimistic here. All I'm saying is they've tried to create multiple Gaza envelopes yeah. around each of these. Yeah. But like multiple Gaza envelopes are multiple Gaza problems for them. Right. Right. And, uh, and yeah, anyway, yeah. so we'll see as at, at the lion's den, one of the resistance groups said as much in a communication the other day, they said, we will see who besieges who. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can see that they're thinking along those lines too. Um, Iran, I didn't get to report the, uh, apparent Israeli response to the Iranian response, which was launching some quadcopters from inside Iran over Isfahan and having them immediately be shot down. Uh, sh I, you know, there was a there's a theory floating that Israel launched an F thirty five loaded with a nuclear weapon that was shot down by the Russians, but I'm skeptical. I'm, I admit that I think I'm a lot of people are skeptical of that one. Skeptical of that one. <laughs> that if it's true, that means that there's an F thirty five in the middle of the Jordanian desert somewhere, loaded with a nuclear bomb. And a dead pilot. And a dead pilot. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, Iraq. There was a story of Iraq making a communication saying we're going to resume our attacks on the American spaces. And then apparently a communication saying, no, we didn't say that. It was Reuters. 
but there are reports of actual attacks on American bases. So whether they did or didn't communicate, I've seen at reports of four missiles at the Al Omar f- oil field base, three missiles and a drone against Kharab Ajir in um, Syria, and then uh, Ain al Assad again hit by drones in Iraq. So maybe they, maybe this has started without them declaring it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, in Yemen, uh, so on the Yemen front, Ansar Allah, Germany has withdrawn the Hessen frigate. So Danish, British, and French frigates have all withdrawn from the Red Sea mission against Ansar Allah. Um, you know, noble history of the German Navy, just in ruins. <laughs> just like those U-boat campaigns where they sunk merchant ships and got blown up by the British Navy. But you know what? Hope springs eternal for the Germans. Maybe, <laughs> maybe next maybe time. this time. <laughs> maybe next time it'll be different. You know, remember that little guy we talked about? Yeah, I read a whole interview by him. The the yeah, the small, the relatively small stature Jewish man who was being manhandled by all the police. And he Oh, 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 from yeah, from the, from the Palestine the, conference. Yeah. The last time you joined a Sarah yeah. Nora. And he he was like, I would tell people who are thinking of moving to Germany, Jewish people not to, to think yeah. twice. So he's basically like, it's fine if you're Jewish and you don't, and you're pro-Israel, but if you're Jewish and you're yeah. anti-Israel, you're going to be declared a danger to Jewish people and all kinds of stuff. So he lost his job. Oh, um, I didn't see that. They froze oh. his his organization's bank accounts. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, he's been having a rough time of it, man out there so um hezbollah constant attacks um bigger missiles some of the bigger burkhan 500 kilogram payload missiles uh all over just constant al-wazini hanita jalal alam al-dahira ayn zaitim al-samaka on and on they took down another hermes 450 there's a video which i'm sure john will show on wednesday's uh live stream is it on wednesday again yep okay um, the Israelis did an airstrike right where the Hermes came down. Apparently, they were trying to destroy the remains or something, probably. Uh, they struck, Hezbollah struck units of the Iron Dome in Kafar Bloom, and they've been hitting Safad ever since. So maybe the mm-hmm. Iron Dome unit they took out and they've been hitting. And there was the other thing I didn't get to report on was this Arab Al Aramshe ambush. Have you seen this one? No. So while. Israel was setting up some kind of headquarters. This is in reported in the cradle, but also lots of um, lots of reports. But Israel was setting up some kind of headquarters with fairly VIP kind of commanders um, at this mm. base, Ein al Arab al Aramshe, and the uh, Hezbollah hit it with a drone, like while they were gathered, and they admit. The Israelis admitted to like 14 or 18, 19 casualties. 18 casualties. Oh. So this was a big one. They were they they had no idea, they have no idea how Hezbollah knew that they were gathering there, how they set up there. So it's like uh showing off their intelligence capabilities as well as you know their drone. I mean, they were warned, yeah. right? Like Nasrallah yeah. was like <laughs> You're going to keep poking us. You have no idea what's coming. And he said something. There's a quote in this Cradle article uh, where the author quotes. It's his name. It's probably a pseudonym. Oh, maybe it's not. Khalil Nasrallah He is the author. Um, He quotes him saying, he quotes uh, Hassan Hassan Nasrallah saying, it is not important what you know about the resistance, but what the resistance knows about you. Yeah, so, I mean, that's like basic 101. So there. Okay, so Gaza. Um, Al-Aqsa Marge's Brigade's fierce clashes in Beit Hanun. So Beit Hanun being at the very entrance to Gaza Yeah. from Israel in the very, very north. It's like which, in the corner, the uh, the northeast corner of Gaza. Um, where the Israelis first entered, where there were first battles... This is an area that the Israelis would have been telling everybody there was under control 
for since the first days of the invasion. Yeah. So this is Beit Hanun, and this is where they say there's fighting. So uh Kassam Brigade reports that they mortared a gathering of troops there. They hit them with mortars. They hit a soldier with with a sniper, hit a, an Israeli soldier there, and they targeted a D9 bulldozer with a Yassin 105. So just the usual pattern of... I mean, how many bulldozers like does the Israeli uh, army have left? Like, they're running. Many. They're yeah, running they've out. definitely got to be um, feeling those, yeah. those losses. Um, fighting in Javalia, also in the north, um, mm-hmm. they report mortars on forces entering Deir el Bala, which is in the more in the middle. Um, Israelis are bombing Al Magraka, Al Burej. Um, there are airstrikes all over central Gaza, targeting a hospital, Al Auda mm-hmm. Hospital. So mm-hmm. classic. Um, so Ismail Haniye gave interviews. He went to Turkey to talk to Erdogan. And what, it was interesting because he said, you know, we want, he named the following countries that he wants to guarantee a future agreement. He said, of course, you know, the UN and the US, but he wants Egypt, Qatar, Turkey, and Russia. So these are the countries that Hamas trusts to provide guarantees. And I think that's probably right. Like, you need countries. Mm-hmm. You can't just have the United Nations, which is so easy to bully. Um, Israel, the head of the intelligence directorate, Aharon Haliba, resigned. Yep. And another person, Yehuda Fox, the head of the Central Command, announced his plans to resign. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, intelligence yeah i mean they um, could be scared that they could be charged with war crimes if mm-hmm. the icc prosecution goes ahead which we're all waiting for that hold your breath hold your breath but uh but yeah i mean if if it does go ahead people like you know these top generals um will be the first in line to be implicated so all right now that covers it we're now ready to go to the u.s front do you I like want that to... you're wearing your New York Yankees. Yeah, you know, t-shirt. I thought I thought it would be somebody <laughs> gave me this, and I thought, you know, tonight's the sure, night. Sure, right? someone gave it to you. Tonight's the <laughs> okay. I went out and bought it when I heard yeah, about there the you comments. Go. <laughs> I went to New York to buy it. Um, okay, so eleven encampments now. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. It might be up to twelve at this point. UC Berkeley just today. Um, oh announced so and you had you had nothing to do with that no 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 despite it being in your in my in my hometown um no it's uh spontaneous and brilliant and um yeah so all of these encampments of course columbia was the one that started it all last week last wednesday so it's been what is this the the fifth sixth day i can't do math um of an encampment that began at like 4.30 in the morning uh, last Wednesday, um, where students have been demanding that Columbia University cut ties with companies that do business with the Israeli military, that it cut ties with institutional relationships between Columbia and and Israel. Um, and, you know, and and some of those like institutional relationships are, are research projects that are you know, uh, that that go to developing weapons that are killing people in in Gaza. So, um, and this is not new. Obviously, the you know the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement has been alive and well on campuses for nearly two decades now. But and Columbia has been you know one of the mo- you know most visible universities over the past I don't know ten years at least. Um, with their not just their Students for Justice in Palestine chapter, but also the Columbia University Apartheid Divest, which is a, a you know, like a a a, a coalition of uh, student groups that have all come together uh, over the last few years to demand that Columbia cut its uh, ties with with Israel. So, yeah, these students they had a, are they had, a refer- they had a referendum. Today, yeah, 
77 percent i think of the students yeah. um voted in favor of cutting institutional ties there's a um, there's one to cut the financial ties which was like 1500 mm -hmm. voted to cut the ties and 300 against mm -hmm. and some abstain lots of abstentions too but yeah hundreds of abstentions that there was one to end the dual degree between columbia and an right. israeli university that was yeah. more like 1300 for and 200 against and then yeah. there's something called the tel aviv global center mm -hmm. which they voted to cancel 1300 to 200 as well yeah i'm not even sure what the tel aviv global center is but That's, i mean all yeah. of these you know elite institutions have something like that where it's like you know, either like a study abroad program or, um, you know, they, they, they kind of like share researchers, uh, a lot of like graduate students go and they develop. Yeah, there we go. Columbia Global so Centers. Columbia so, has so they're global all over the world. Centers in Amman, <laughs> Athens, Beijing, yeah. Istanbul, Nairobi, Paris, Rio, Santiago, Tel Aviv, and Tunis. Welcome to mm -hmm. Network of Eleven. Explore. <laughs> I mean, it's all just like academic, weird word salad. Like, what is it? It's scholarly engagement yes. with Israel. You know, what does that mean? Its initial priorities will include climate change, technology, entrepreneurship, science, public health, and medicine, right? So it's like all these like really benign sounding buzzwords. But of course, the one with Tel Aviv probably is, you know, the majority of it is like research and development for surveillance, spy tech, biotech, and weapons and it aligns, engineering. It aligns with Columbia World uh -huh. Projects and the Institute for Ideas and Imagination. And the Obama and Foundation. Scholars. Obama Foundation Scholars <laughs> and other global university initiatives. It's not yeah. easy to find out what this is. is it? Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But, you know. Students don't want it anymore. Students don't want it anymore. No. Um, so there's, um, so we have, we also have Yale, Tufts, mm -hmm. Emerson, MIT, Harvard, NYU. NYU. Where faculty where got arrested today. Today. And now just in the last couple of hours, uh, the NYPD has like shut down campus. Um, so it's. Of I NYU. Think, of on NYU. Yeah. So they arrested all the faculty that were uh sensibly protecting their students from arrest. Um and and now they've they've Hands shut off down our campus. students. That was the slogan yeah. I saw. Yeah. These these faculty, they look totally bewildered as they're being led away. Yeah. <laughs> they've like, never they've never a, experienced this before. This is not a familiar experience for them. <laughs> They just they know office like, hours and like they look tenure. like they want to be back in class. You know, <laughs> look get at me, that guy. Get me but back you know, in class. thank God, like these, you know, these, this is the whole point, right? To like, to stir something up in, in these cushy academic institutions that, that are so far removed from reality in many, many places, especially in places like NYU and Columbia and, Tuition you know, you is can go, 80, tuition is eighty thousand a year or something. Exactly. Right? And you can spend your whole life just coasting, you know, up the tenureship ladder and not engaging with the world. And and you, you know, you could throw your students under the bus if you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and so I think it's really uh it's fantastic that that these professors are being willing to get arrested. Uh, all for the sake of protecting their students who have a legitimate right to demand that their universities are not participating in genocide. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty fundamental, but uh, but this but is where we're at. That, that's anti-Semitic. Right, right, right. So the amazing thing about, I mean, nothing, nothing is amazing, actually. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even have that preface. Nothing, but nothing the utterly, be. actually, let me rephrase. The utterly predictable <laughs> campaign of lies yeah. that has gone all the way up to like, again, the president's office immediately was like, these are anti-Semitic terrorists. Mm -hmm. um, one of these, the business prof went on Israeli, Israeli television and said they're all terrorists and yeah. deserve to be, you know, Doubtless neutralized or whatever he said. Yeah, exactly. 
I wish I'd never known his name ever. Like I could have lived my whole life without knowing that guy existed, but here we are. (laughs) What is he doing? Who is he working for? What's that? What's going on there? That's too, it's it's too much. Like he had one, one tantrum, one tantrum is like, He's literally stomping his foot. Yeah, but that's believable. But like this constant presence everywhere and calling people and going on TV and calling for the National Guard. This is this is war. There's something something unraveling. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's again, there's a psychological aspect, but there's also a strategic aspect that Mm -hmm. just haven't figured out what he's I mean this so the psychological aspect for me is something that I've been uh, talking about for six and a half months now, which is like yeah. how October 7th has broken Zionist, Zionist brains and, and completely like shattered their psychology where they thought they were so impenetrable and impervious and, uh, you know, like they didn't have to think about their status as settlers um, and the whole world is in revolt. Um, and in support of Palestinian resistance. And they can't, they cannot understand it. They can't understand it. And they all have this persecution complex because that's what they've grown up with. That's the indoctrination of Zionism. And so they are persecuted. They are the, they are the, the, you know, the only victims uh, that should be, um, you know, uh, uh, taken care of. But then there's also the practical, um, reason justification which is and a lot of students have been pointing this out over the last few days they're like please stop focusing on this guy or Mm -hmm. you know these zionist uh you know attention seekers because what it's doing is it's both it's forcing people to just focus on what's happening at columbia or nyu or mit and taking the attention away from gaza Mm-hmm. And which is um, the goal, which is which is the goal, thing. which is the reason why these protests are happening. So, you know, so the Zionists don't want you to look at the at the situation in Gaza. They don't want that attention to be given center stage. They don't want the news to be focused around, you know, why these students are protesting. They just want to create these, you know, circuses of distractions Um Right. So, but it you know it's fun to watch a, a complete meltdown on. Uh, well, there's on this. There is Twitter. there is a line that I think like as I as I've transitioned from analyzing Israeli strategy to analyzing Israeli psychology, just because yeah. strategic thinking does not seem to be at play here in in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um. There are there are like you know Freud has this. You go back to like these psychological theories and Freud has this idea that like the things you say like you blurt out they are actually revealing of like Mm. the whole structure of what you say and like one of the things they always blurt out is like October 7th killed more Jews than the Holocaust and that line like you can't that line tells you a lot about how they think because it actually is a deeply racist line because it's yeah. like you don't care that they killed people you care that they killed jews and it's yes. like the so it places jews like out there's like humanity and then there's jews like on another yeah. level and so yeah it, it 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 is revealing of a of a supremacist worldview yeah um, and it's it's interesting because like as you were Saying that, I was thinking about my grandmother, who was born in uh, a tenement in the Lower East Side of New York. Um, grew up speaking Yiddish, didn't know English until she went to, you know, to kindergarten. Um, all around her were Jewish immigrants, um, and you know, she she grew up and uh, she was born. I don't know, maybe like a hundred years. She would have been over a hundred by now, um, but. You know, she was born at a time before the Second World War, before, uh, you know, the Holocaust um, and before Zionism um, had really, you know, taken a a, a, a material hold. Um, And but she was because her parents had fled the pogroms at the turn of the century, 
um, and everyone around them had fled the pogroms and were trying to build, you know, a new life in New York. Um, she still had this uh, intense fear, which obviously was was well founded, um, that came out of trauma, um, that uh, that that the persecution was uh, eternal, sort of thing. Right. Um, and so when she would read the the newspaper, she would, I mean, she wouldn't like read the headline. She'd just go straight for the obituaries. <laughs> Oh. This is my grandma. And she'd scan the obituaries and like um uh, uh and and look out for the for the Jewish names for people who were Jewish. And she would say, you know, she would she would I don't know, say something about how, you know, it's such a shame. Um, but she, she wouldn't look at any of the other names, just just the Jewish names. And I always thought that is was I, I've interesting. Never, I've never been able to tell a Jewish name from like a German name. Can you, can, is there a way like. Sometimes it's certain... the amount of letters like, okay. um, like, like, uh, uh, yeah, like, like Friedman. two S's, right. Friedman with two N's at the end is, is Probably German. German, not Jewish, right. but Friedman with one N was was Jew, you know, was other European Ashkenazi Jewish. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, she would like scan, you know, right. and 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 look at the Jewish names and uh, she would, you know, kind of like beat her chest. <laughs> oh. um, and so I, you know, I don't know, like it's, it's that, that I could understand in this very kind of like right. um, primal way where, right. where she grew up from, from trauma. But, uh, but but this whole like weaponizing of of October seventh of the indoctrination of Zionists in uh, you know in Israel and around the world who ha are like paralyzed with this yeah with this like um, this adage of uh, of this was the worst slaughter of Jews. Yeah. Since the Holocaust, a it's that's not accurate. Um, I mean, we still see the like twelve hundred number yeah. being. Yeah. I mean, everywhere, like it's everywhere. People just kind of like accepted that twelve hundred Jews were murdered on October seventh. Um, they don't say murdered by who. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, what the Hannibal you issue. And, yes, yeah. exactly. How many? How many of those kibbutz? You know residents were murdered by Apache helicopter gunships flown by yep. uh, Israelis, you know, many, if not most is what, is what we have yep. come to realize. Yep. Um, but also but, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's this, like, you can't, um, you can't go past like that. That is the place yep. that they're stuck in. You know what else factually I suspect more Israeli soldiers have died since in the past seven months than people than Israelis oh, yeah. died on October 7th, but they're yeah. covering up the casualties. So you'll never right. hear them say this was the worst. No, never. Death. This is the highest number right. of deaths of Jews in Merkava tanks and, right. and right. clumps or, of like, soldiers. Or like friendly in, fire, yeah. like in Gaza, you know, there was, there was a bunch of incidents few months ago where they like had to admit that some of them were friendly i mean they shot their own hostages during that one like yeah. failed mission a few couple months ago <laughs> it's deadly it's deadly it's a yeah. deadly thing they kill it... so many jews they hate jews yeah apparently so apparently much. But, like, but also like the the yeah. argentina dirty war yeah right like yeah. i i don't even know how many jewish argentines were killed um with supplied by is Israel yeah. was supplying well, the yeah, weapons. Is, it's an interesting you know, history I, of anti-Semitism too, because it's like yeah. the reason that right-wing Europeans like Nazis in Eastern Europe or, or Germany hated Jews was because they associated them with the left. Yeah. And that's also why they killed them in such numbers in Argentina, yeah. as, et cetera. It's like yeah. they're associated with the left. So, right. and Zionists hate nothing more than the left, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, yeah, but like the the way they're campaigning around the campuses, like just as a almost final note on this 
what will end up being a relatively short sit rep nice. um, is like to do this thing about Jewish feelings, you know, Jewish feelings of safety in the context of an actual genocide. Yeah. While also ignoring or like basically making invisible the Jewish students that are just a regular part of this protest, like anybody else. It's so it, sick. It's it's it does have a like special vulgarity. Like it does yeah. it does speak to a real race racial supremacist mentality to be yeah. like the feelings of safety of our group matter more than the fact that yeah this group this group that we identify with right has blown up every university that's right that's right gaza i mean it goes back to this like you know these identity politics um mm -hmm. the, the weaponization of identity politics and turning zionism into an identity into yeah. a persecuted identity right yeah. as though it's not a choice zionism yeah. is a hundred thousand percent a choice yeah. it is a political ideology that you can choose to believe in and you can choose to leave yeah. um you know judaism existed six thousand years before zionism and it will exist way after zionism you know is done and it, it so so for these like whining uh Rivalies. zionists yeah. yeah who are like we're being persecuted while there's a literal genocide happening um it's and, yeah. i i don't even know what to say and, and it's the not even like persecution is like people chanting yeah. anti-israel slogans or being right. mad at them for trying to beat them up or that's whatever. right yeah, the persecution is I can't, you know, now my ID is like deactivated. You know, deactivated. I can't get into my fancy office at Columbia. He can get into that's his office. The... He can't oh. go to a counter protest. He that's can go to the right. business that's... school where he works. There you go. Yeah, he's there you just go. not allowed Perfect. to go to this. I mean, that's persecution. That's you know, persecution. He's, he literally said, you know, it's 1938. Like, how dare you? How dare <sighs> you? How dare you? That is disgusting. These students are are trying, you know, to stop their university from funding and participating in a genocide. And you are the one who's persecuted. I just I can't. I that's I can't. And so, like, yeah, it's you know, I I have um a lot of uh pride and and um and like affection for the students who are doing these like very public displays of, you know, there was like a Seder happening this, this yeah. afternoon on, on Columbia's campus, liberation Seder. And like, you know, the, the anti-Zionist Jews um, on campus are, are making themselves very visible. And there's a lot of discussion about how, you know, these Zionist, um, you know, provocateurs don't represent, you know, Jewish students on campus and their experience fine. I'm sick of talking about it. I, yeah, I, yeah. I understand it. And I am so glad that those students are doing it, but the focus right. needs to be on Palestine right now. The focus is on Gaza. The focus is on the complicity of these elite U S institutions in right. perpetuating this genocide. Um, so it's and, like, okay, like we, and it's like the whole world's, yeah. it is a world struggle. Like it's a, yeah. it's a struggle of exactly. the whole world. It's not it has, a struggle it, over I, the Jewish soul. Exactly. That's it. Like, like we have to extricate our own, you know, uh, matters of feeling good about being part of something uh, because of our identity, X, Y, and Z. We have to just do it. Um, yeah and it's not it's yeah. not gonna be like decide yeah. so I, i'll i'll conclude on a typical yeah. sit rep note it's not gonna be decided in the jewish conscience it's gonna be right. decided on the battlefield that's right and, and that's uh, where it's happening and we will be reporting on it you'll be back on when you'll be on ei wednesday live stream wednesday everybody tune in that's noon my time eastern time and uh i don't know when i'll be back but i'll be back soon maybe wednesday night <laughs> debriefing your live stream <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> all right i watch it um okay uh what do i say uh hang on chin like up subscribe
<laughs> and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Justin.